Okay, so welcome to week four, day one, notes, okay, and what the, technically it's the front side if you are printing these out, but if you are just handwriting these, the first part of these notes is just a review of the four different formats of equations. So <clears throat> there's a table that we would like for you guys to either fill in or uh, create for yourself. What the letters mean. And use when. And it's got three columns in it. And what we have given you is we've given you <clears throat> the four formulas that we use. We have y equals a times b to the power of x. We have a of t is equal to p1. It says plus or minus r. Um, it's really only ever going to be plus. Then there's A of T is 1 plus or minus. Once again, it's I've never seen it as plus or minus. Um, should just be plus. R over N to the NT. And last but not least, <clears throat> A of T is this is the formula I refer to as PERT. I don't know if you guys even remember the shampoo or if it's even still around, but <clears throat> I call it PERT. And so what we would like for you to do is go ahead and just pause the video, um, take a few minutes, tell us what the different letters mean in these different equations and when you would use these different equations. And then you can unpause the video and come back and we can discuss the uses and the definitions. Okay, so hopefully you paused and you took a few minutes to fill in that information to your table. So now hopefully we are checking this. Okay, so this first formula is just a standard exponential function. And we've used it for lots of different things. Um, what the different letters mean, A is your starting amount. Graphically, that means it's your y-intercept. B is going to be 1 plus or minus r. Um, and so r tells you what your rate of growth or decay is. And remember that it's got to be written as a decimal. So it's got to be converted from a percentage to a decimal, okay? X is the number of periods or intervals that have taken place. And so we've done these for problems where X represents the number of days that something has taken, a number of years, things like that. And then Y is the amount of whatever it is that you have after. Um, your periods or intervals have taken place. So we use this when we are given two points or two ordered pairs on a graph or in a word problem. Um, you use it when it's not considered yearly time. So it could still actually be years, but I think we're talking about monetary growth yearly. Um, if you are talking about population of a city, that grows every year, this is still the equation that you would use. Um, this is also the equation that we have used in the past when we have not been given a percent. We've had to use two ordered pairs to actually figure out what our B value and therefore our R value. Okay, so then the next formula 
is when we have annual interest. So that means that you are earning interest on money, but you are only getting one payment per year. P is the principal amount or the initial starting amount. God. Um, so it's your starting amount of money. R is your annual interest rate. And once again, it's got to be as a decimal. T is the amount of time that you have invested your money, and that's got to be in years. And then A of T is the amount of money you now have after T number of years, okay? And you use this when you have yearly interest. The next formula is compound interest. And the last formula is continuous interest. And they have the same definitions as actually the second row. Um, P is still your principal. Actually, I think it's AL um, for the amount of money that you're starting with. <clears throat> R is still your interest rate. Still as a decimal. T is still your time in years for both of them. And A of T is still the amount of money after T years, or the amount you'll have now. Okay, it's the amount of money after T years. But this third row is when you have interest that's compounded more frequently than once a year. So you'll use this formula when you have interest that you're earning monthly or quarterly or even weekly or daily, not that we're really gonna practice that. Uh, and then the last row is when you are getting your interest continuously. Okay, so those are the four rows, the four formulas that we wanted you to review and fill in your table, okay? And you had used these a little bit um, to solve for time, because we had taught you guys how to use logs to solve exponentials. But what we're going to be wrapping up this unit with is reviewing, um, solving all different kinds of equations. And so there's still two things that we have not yet practiced solving for, okay? Not everything requires logs. So part of solving is figuring out what is it I'm being asked to solve for? And what is it that I need to do to solve? So what we are going to actually do is for today, we are going to be solving for P, our principal amount, or R, our interest rate. Okay, so we are not just gonna be doing evaluating to find A of T and solving to find T. We're not just going to be doing that, okay? So I'm going to, technically it's four problems because what I've done is I'm going to do two problems for you and I'm going to do each of them with two different equations. So question one that we're going to do wants to know is what rate, what interest rate would you need to invest $5,000 for eight years and earn $7,500 by the end of it if your interest is compounded 
And part A, the first way that we're going to do this is we're going to do this if we have quarterly interest, okay? So quarterly interest, of course, means that we are going to be using our compound interest formula. So copy that from the front side, one plus or minus, we're just gonna do plus, r over n to the nt, okay? And we're going to plug in everything that we know from this word problem. We know that at the end of this, we want to have $7,500. We know that we are going to invest $5,000 as our principal. We are solving for R, because that's what we've been asked for. And we are, in this instance, getting our interest quarterly. So N is going to be 4 in both of those places right there. And our time, the amount of time we are investing this is 8 years. Okay. So I want you to notice that our variable is not in an exponent. So this is not going to be an exponential where we have to use logs to solve, okay? So what we need to do is treat this like any other algebraic equation where we're going to peel the layers. We're going to move things away from R to solve for R, to isolate it. So the first thing we would do is we would divide by 5,000 to move it to the other side. And that gives us 1.5 is equal to 1 plus r over 4. And our exponent is 4 times 8, so I'm just going to rewrite it as a 32. So then my next step is I can't solve for r until I can get inside of the parentheses. And so I need to be able to get rid of the parentheses. And in order to do that, I need to get rid of this exponent, that 32 right there. So I'm going to raise both sides to the power of 1 over 32. And that's the same thing as taking the 32nd root of 1.5. So you are either going to be leaving this in a very messy format for an answer, or you're going to type it into a calculator. Um, and ultimately, these will more than likely be calculator problems because you really can't leave an answer for an interest rate. You can't approximate it without a calculator. So that will get rid of <clears throat> the 32. And so we would have 1 plus r over 4 now. We were able to get rid of the parentheses. And we now have the 32nd root of 1.5 on the left side or on the other side. And then we would subtract the 1 to move it over. Remember that we cannot combine the 1.5 and the 1 because the 1.5 is inside of a root and the 1 is not. So at that point, what we have is we have r over 4 on one side, and we have the 32nd root of 1.5 and then a minus 1 on the other side. And then the last step would be to take both sides and multiply by 4 to get r by itself. So our answer for r is 4 times the 32nd root of 1.5 minus 1. And that 4 would have to multiply to that entire thing. And at this point, if you are allowed a calculator, if you have access to a calculator, then you could actually type this in and generate an answer that actually makes sense in the context of the real world problem. And what you would get is 0 0.0510. And what that is telling you is that your interest rate would be 5.1%. Because remember that when R gets plugged into an equation, it gets converted to a decimal from the percent. So to answer this, we would need to also convert that back to a percentage. Okay? Then the part B... The second way that we're going to do this problem, and I'm just doing this so that I don't have to rewrite the whole original problem, okay? So the second way we're going to do this is if our interest is continu continuous. I can't spell today. So if our interest is going to be continuous this time around, then we would use our continuous interest formula instead, our PERT, P-E to the R-T. 
And so we still know that our ending amount is going to be 7,500. We still know that our principal is going to be 5,000. And we still know that our amount of time is going to be eight years, but we are now trying to solve for R. And so this time around, I want you to notice that the variable that we are trying to solve for is in fact in an exponent. So this is an exponential function that we are asking you to solve. And so at some point you will use a log to solve this. But your first step is still to divide by the 5,000 to move it to the other side. And so that would leave you with e to the power of 8r is equal to 1.5. Then what you would do is take the log of both sides. Now you can do common log or you can do natural log. Okay, we've been concentrating on natural log in our notes because this is gonna be the log that you use in pre-cal. So I'm going to go ahead and take the natural log of both sides. When I take the natural log of E on the right side, it will cancel out and so I will just have the natural log of 1.5 on the left is equal to 8r on the right. And so now the only thing I have to do to solve for r is divide by 8. And so r is going to be the natural log of 1.5 divided by 8. Okay, and when I type that into my calculator, what I get is 0.0507 which means my interest rate is 5.07%. Okay, so hopefully the last problem will go a little bit faster. I know that <clears throat> these notes are running a little bit longer because of the review um, of the formulas on the front. But we're gonna do one more problem, okay, because we still have one more thing to learn to solve for. Okay, so the final question is going to be how much would you need to invest if you wanted ten thousand dollars after five years at 8% <clears throat> if your interest is compounded. And then once again, we're gonna run through this <clears throat> in two different scenarios. So scenario number one, we're going to do monthly interest, okay? So once again, we are back to our compound interest formula. So A of T is equal to P one plus R over N to the NT. But this time when we plug in everything that we've been given in the word problem, we know that we are going to have an ending value of $10,000. We're being asked to solve for P, so we don't know what P is. We know our interest rate is 0.08 and we're getting our interest monthly, so N is 12. And we've invested it for five years. And so this time around, the unknown that we're trying to solve for is just this P. And P is just being multiplied to all of this over here. So literally all we need to do is take all of this. You notice everything in it is numerical. And that means it's just going to be a number. It's gonna be a messy number but it's just going to be a number. So all we need to do to solve for P is divide. Okay, so I'm going to take this and divide it to move it down. So one plus 0 0.08 divided by 12. I'm gonna go ahead and multiply the 12 and the five and give myself an exponent of 60 because that's just one last thing that I would need to write. And there you go, this will get rid of that. P is now isolated and solved for, and then you would go ahead and type this into your calculator, and what she would get is an approximate 
value, because remember we are rounding for dollars and cents, of $6,712.10. And that would be approximately what you need to invest. Okay? And then the last scenario is, of course, practicing continuous interest. So continuously. So we go back to our PERT formula. We still want to end up with $10,000. We are still solving for our principal, and we know our interest rate is 0 0.08, and we know our amount of time is five years. And once again, we are solving for P. P is being multiplied to E to the power of 0 0.08 times five. Once again, this is all numerical. E is a number. It's being raised to a numerical power. And so to solve, all we would need to do is take this E and if you want to, I would go ahead again, and I would multiply these two numbers together in your exponent and make it become a 0.4. So you're going to just divide by e to the 0.4 to get p by itself. And this time when you type that into your calculator, you get an answer of $6,703.20. Okay, so the practice problems that you're going to try today um, and tomorrow are going to do, repeat one of each scenario. Okay, so question one for your practice. Okay, is what interest rate? would you have to get or would you need to invest $2,500 for five years and double your money If it is compounded and then part A is going to be semi-annually and part B is going to be continuous. That's the first practice problem. Okay, so that time you're solving for R. And the last practice problem, number two, says how much would you need to invest if you want to have $50,000 after 15 years earning 12% if it's compounded and then A is going to be quarterly and B is going to be continuously again. So one of each, one problem to solve for R using each equation, one problem to solve for P using each equation, just like the notes did. Thanks, you guys.